Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, hello, how are you? I'm doing well, how about yourself? Good, good. Um, Andrew McMillan, um, I'm gonna be your PACAC facilitator. I work Wonderful. for Swickley Academy in, uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Very nice. And so, Welcome. yeah, I'm going to um, be able to you know, help. And now, have you been able to, or are you able to, um, to share all of your, um, your screen and everything like that? Can we test that just to make sure? Sure. Should be a rather quick turnaround. Oh, perfect. Yes. Things look good. Great. Awesome. So just wanted to make sure of that. Um, let me do one more thing. Is it all right, Andrew, if I reshare my screen real quick? Yeah, no, of course. So I'm actually going to um, have you go ahead to, to do it to start just for, for that. I forgot that I'm going to need to share something first um, and then uh, go over a few things at the very beginning of it at two. Um, you know, it's going to last 30 seconds, you know, and I'm obviously going to be, um, be introducing you. And then um, uh, also, um, you know, just so I'm pronouncing it correctly, Umberger, right? Correct. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured as much, but I thought, you know what, that would be Thanks the last so thing I wanted to, you know, it seems so very obvious to me. I had a, a ton of the virtual six by six sessions, which are way different. This is my first sort of open forum, but of them, I just, they kept giving me a different school. I got University of New Orleans. I got Loyola Chicago. <laughs> so it's been, it's been fun. I appreciate the clarification. Sure, sure, no, of course. Um, and so, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be sharing, you know, my screen first, um, you know, just to kind of go over, you know, a few things. Um, and yeah, I, I, I have some stuff just in case, you know, anything, anything, uh, you know, happens. Um, but yeah, we should be, we should be good. They do have, and they have wanted us to have a hard stop at the 45 minutes. So, um, you know, I'll essentially, you know, if I take 30 seconds or, or an additional minute, I'm not going to cost cost you that time. So 146 as opposed to, or sorry, 246 as opposed to um, 245 um, for that. But then, yeah, we should be um, we should be all set. Yeah, I have an alarm set on my watch. I am hoping that I'm not going to need it necessarily. <laughs> but um, and I also, likewise, I don't think there are going to be many people tuning in live in real time. So I I don't foresee much of an issue here. But sure. Cool. Great. Nice. Do you want me to have a new video and audio for your little introduction or? Sorry? Do you want me to be uh, muted and without video for your introduction while you share your screen or? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, no, no, you can be, you can be on um, and, and have, you know, audio. That's not an issue uh, at all. Sorry. Yeah. No, just, I don't want you to share until after I'm done sharing. Um, so we should be in, in good shape. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. Okay, and so I'm going to quickly share. And this is actually for um, for you and me, Doug. Um, so again, I mentioned 45 minutes, everything will be recorded. Um, 
you know, you're going to be the one, you know, primarily doing everything um, except for the very beginning. Um, obviously, we have everything on the share screen. You, you've already demonstrated your ability um, to do all of that. Um, and then, um, you know, when you, um, if you are going to be playing any type of video, um, make sure you have the shared computer sound. No? Okay, great. Um, again, if there's any questions, we'll ask that you, it all goes through. And at the very beginning, I'll ask that everything goes through the Q&A button and not any raise hand, um, you know, feature at all. Um, and then, of course, if you want to manage anything, you can help manage anything uh, in that way. Um, and I think I actually said that I'm starting the uh, webinar uh, already. So that's th this is all being recorded as well. Um, so no, no big deal on that, uh, on that side. Uh, and again, making sure that everything um, occurs. And so then I'll thank everybody from there uh, and go from there. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah. So I don't think I need to share anything on my end. Um, yeah, I'm just going to end up, you know, going through, you know, everything here. Um, as needed. Again, I, I'm not expecting anybody to uh, to have any uh, any potential issues, but um, but if so, I I'll have the uh, controls to help kick something out. Um, if you and, I, and I'm I'm supposed to do the same thing. I go dark and uh, and mute myself while the session happens. But if there is something that you know um, does come up, please feel free to say, Hey, Andrew, can you you know help? help with something you know, or, or, or whatever um, that's going on. Cool, thanks again. Of course. So yeah, so we'll get started here. You know, hopefully people will be able to start joining you know, automatically here now at two o'clock and, uh, and we'll get started. We'll give a couple more minutes to see if anybody comes in, Doug. And if not, um, obviously they've asked us to still have you go through, you know, your normal presentation so that it can be recorded and then posted for for the future. And um, and I figure we can we can still have you go through as much as you you would like for um, for that part of the session, uh, and then and then go from there. But I do want to give everybody you know, a few more minutes if that's okay. Okay. Well, if it's okay, we will get started. And then again, we will have this up for posterity's sake and for anybody that's interested um, at any point in time. Okay. Great. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew McMillan. I'm the PAC Act facilitator uh, for today's presentation. Uh, today we have Doug Umberger from Loyola University of New Orleans here to present for us. I'm going to let Doug take it away in a second here. And, uh, and hopefully um, you have plenty of questions and then some things to be able to ask Doug um, you know, here during the session. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Doug. Thanks for having me. All right, folks. Welcome. Thanks for joining Loyola University, New Orleans. Again, my name is Doug Umberger, Associate Director of Admissions and the Northeast Regional Representative uh, for the university. I'm regionally based in Washington, D.C. Um, from there, just the same, this is a little bit of a pleasure working with students from Pennsylvania. I have a lot of different affinities, also being sort of tethered to the Northeast. I was born and raised out of Philadelphia, 
My mom currently lives in the Pocono Mountains. I had lived for close to five years in York, Pennsylvania, and we have a dearth of students that make their way down from Pittsburgh for different art programs. So it's nice finding my way to VGH every single year. Um, lots to cover over the course of this presentation, um, but we're just gonna start with a general, a general overview of Loyola University, New Orleans, again, in the heart of New Orleans, Louisiana. You see sort of the laundry list of different statistics here. Again, it's a relatively smaller school with just a tick over 3000 undergraduate students. So the average class size, regardless of your major is going to hover around 20 students. We have the 12 to one student to faculty ratio with well over hundred different undergraduate academic programs, majors, minors, disciplines, over 100 student organizations. We'll chat about that a little bit further. And that final point there at the bottom is one of my two big key takeaways when speaking with prospective students. Um, it lists us as number 15 in the nation for diversity and inclusion. According to the Princeton Review, we are proud that that was actually bumped up to number seven. So one key takeaway with Loyola, again, being a relatively smaller university with about 3,000 undergraduate students, um, we are actually number seven in the nation for diversity and inclusion. Uh, we have 55% students of color from their last year's first year class of about 790 first year students represented about 44 different US states and 36 different countries. So again, deeply concentrated, certainly um, a representation of the greater New Orleans community. And it's something that we take a lot of pride in as we we speak to other prospective students. So you might be out of Philly or Pittsburgh or you know, State College, but that student to your right is gonna be out of Maui to your right or to your left is gonna be out of Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, students are traveling from all over the world. We are sandwiched in the nice little pocket of New Orleans. The neighborhood is called the Uptown Neighborhood in this upcoming slide. I'll look a little bit further into sort of the geography and the map of New Orleans, but it is exactly as it appears by way of its photos quintessentially Southern, you have that classic trolley streetcar line system. It is called the streetcar, not the trolley. It's about $1.25. Students use it quite regularly. It's a lovely and very creative way to get the lay of the land. It's also a nice way to sort of forego a lift um, geographically to get all around town. So Loyola is directly across the street geographically from Tulane University. So again, not being in the throes of downtown French Quarter, um, but we are a little bit farther removed. It calls for a nice little college bubble of town, knowing that Tulane is about three times our size and essentially the exact same campus at the end of the day. But we are directly across the street, just the same from Audubon Park. Again, you have that two mile running track. You got a beautiful pond, the zoo is there. We're directly on the hug of the Mississippi River, a golf course, just the same. So a good way recreationally to just go and unplug a lot of classes now in these COVID times are heading directly across the street to Audubon Park uh, to do their classes. So whether you're a marine bio student or something rooted in the humanities, students are heading over there for small you know, lectures and, and seminars. Um, so again, to reiterate our geography, we're about a 20 minute streetcar to the heart of downtown, that classic French Quarter. In the opposite direction of the campus, we have the airport. So it splits the difference pretty well between those two geographies. When you start to see sort of the hug of the Mississippi there, that Audubon Park to the far left in means of this graphic, which is not to scale by any stretch of the imagination, but that's where we're located. So you can tell all the different neighborhoods. Again, 72 Loyola is no different in the heart of the Uptown neighborhood. It is very safe. It is very family friendly, very residential. And again, with Tulane being across the street, certainly a little bit of a college bubble of town. I always love that little bit that New Orleans has four different seasons. We are currently in the throes of Saints season, uh, Mardi Gras right around the corner. We just closed out with crawfish and snowball, just the same. And one thing there, in addition to the festivals and the galleries and the museums and the rest of it, um, you see that point that since 2013, there have been more movies and TV productions filmed in New Orleans, Louisiana than any other US city. Something that we like to harp about within our College of Music and Media and our digital filmmaking. It is our second largest major within that college. Uh, New Orleans is also known as Hollywood South. So it's kind of cool that the state of Louisiana and New Orleans specifically is, sort of serves as a backdrop and an aesthetic for Hollywood. So think 12 Years a Slave, American Horror Story, Mud, Green Book, which won Best Picture. 
it feels like every other day or every other week, there's a different TV show or a movie that is filmed directly on our campus. So a really unique opportunity that, you know, a lot of people don't think about when they associate New Orleans. Loyola University New Orleans is a Jesuit university. We're one of 27 different Jesuit universities in the nation um, for the state of Pennsylvania, St. Joe's, St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia, but it goes all the way up to Canisius and Buffalo, all the way down to Loyola New Orleans, all the way over to Loyola Marymount. You start to hear the theme, you see the trend that there are numerous Loyola universities. There are four, quite literally in the signs of the cross, Chicago, New Orleans, Maryland, and Baltimore, and then LA for Marymount University. Um, four completely autonomous, separate universities, different majors, different minors, uh, different programs, but perhaps most importantly, different cultures. You know, New Orleans to Chicago, to Baltimore to LA are four essentially different time zones at the end of the day. Uh, we are proud to be a part of New Orleans, the Jesuit way. The Jesuits are sort of the world travelers of the Catholic Church. They are known as the researchers, as the philosophers, the ones in class that are gonna be badgering you with the question why all the time, um, but you start to see some of the pillars of the Jesuit identity start to form within uh, social justice, community service, studying abroad is a key and integral piece to the Jesuit identity. And then of course, D1 athletics seems to be a, a common overlap across the 27 schools just the same. Like many other institutions and certainly smaller liberal arts schools, we are no different in that we do have a core curriculum. You can think of this along the same lines as a prerequisite course or a general education. Ours is about 18 classes, I believe, maybe 50 to 54 credits. It's a smorgasbord of different offerings. Again, you are required um, to take a certain number of core curriculum classes. Those classes range from uh, diversity and ethics, to foreign language, to theology, to natural and applied sciences, and the arts. So I always like to tell students if you're looking to study abroad, it's a very strategic way to hold on to some of those core classes while you're going abroad. You know, you have the opportunity to bring those back to campus and you're still going to graduate very comfortably within four years time. The core curriculum, again, if you want to knock them out in the first two years, you're able to do so. If you want to hold on and sprinkle them throughout the course of four, you're able to do so just the same. A very interesting way to couple in maybe a minor or two, perhaps even double major, pursue a pre-law or pre-health track. The core, you sit down with your academic advisor and the core gives you that leverage and that opportunity to do so. We have three different colleges for you to choose from within our school. Um, the first is our College of Arts and Sciences, certainly the most robust and the largest at the end of the day. Again, um, a, an array of different programs, some of our largest within the school um, fall within computer science, criminology and justice, neuroscience and psychology. Psychological sciences is actually the largest university or the largest major within the university, which is a nice little fun fact. Political science and pre-law definitely take um, the rest of the more popular programs within our arts and sciences. But you see some of the more common facilities right there to the right. For my friends in psychology or neuroscience, we have all the things you want to hear. We have a brain slicer, we have a rat lab, we have an EEG machine. Um, for my friends who are looking to go into marine biology, which is a really robust program for us. Um, again, we are at the hug of the Mississippi. We have the North Shore. We have the Tennessee River System and the Florida Panhandle. Just remembering that the majority of our faculty and staff have carved out their entire careers essentially within Hurricane Katrina and the BP oil spill. Um, so between the rooftop and just our natural geography, it's a really strategic way to sort of lay the foundation of your professional career within the heart and, and the natural applied sciences there. Like many other colleges, we do have a college of business. Ours is a little different just because we're anchored in New Orleans. I always like to tell students that, of course, it is a radically different experience studying business in New York or Chicago or Seattle versus New Orleans. We do not necessarily have a host of Fortune 500 companies downtown, but we nevertheless um, certainly carved out our focuses in certain aspects and industries. First and foremost, unsurprisingly, you can think of hospitality thinking of the tourism scene. Entrepreneurship, we are known as the number one city in the nation right now for sort of new and creative brain power. It is very entrepreneurial in spirit, very big place for finance and accounting. Um, and of course, our largest is international business, which has a study abroad component um, that is required. But 
At the end of the day, for our College of Business students, it is one third of our students are business students in some capacity. You are required an internship across the board. You have a four year business portfolio. And then from there, you do get an, an alumni mentor as well, specific to the New Orleans sort of metro and community. So just to have those resources and those networkings and, and those stepping stones as you prepare for those internships or that first job opportunity. And a nice little nugget there at the end, a very shameless plug, we do have a four plus one MBA. We can talk about our articulation agreements and our college bound credit, whether you're going for dual enrollment or IB or AP, but a lot of a lot of students like to walk in with a full years of credit. So it's a really nifty way um, to carve out an MBA within four years nowadays, which is kind of cool. And last but certainly not least, we have our College of Music and Media, perhaps our flagship, perhaps our bread and butter, however you want to qualify for, for us. Again, no surprise by any stretch of the imagination being in the throes of New Orleans, the heart and the birthplace of jazz and opera. There's a lot happening within our music and media. Folks, there's about 20 to 25 different majors, minors, and programs that we offer. It's nice to sort of compartmentalize it into our three different schools within this college. When you think of the School of Music and Theater Arts, you can think a little more traditional, think a little more contemporary, everything from jazz studies to opera and music performance, but you also have musical theater, you have theater and business, you have theater arts in and of itself. Um, Loyola University New Orleans is the oldest music therapy program of the South and the third oldest in the world, which is kind of cool. Uh, we have our School of Music Industry. Uh, we are a top 10 billboard music business school, something we take a lot of pride in. A lot of alums who've been nominated or have either won Grammy Awards or rocking it on the Jazz Fest stage. Um, the music industry has three different majors and programs. We have music industry studies. In and of itself, we have popular and commercial music, think more singer songwriter, more contemporary and independent artist of what is what we're trying to cultivate there within popcom. And last but certainly not least within music industry, we have urban and electronic music production. We are the very first school in the nation and I believe the world at some point with a major for urban and electronic music production. Think rap, R&B, hip hop, EDM, we are looking for the producers and that whole industry of the world there. Last but not least, within our College of Music and Media, we have our School of Communication and Design. We are number nine in the nation right now for our school newspaper. So a very hearty um, journalism, broadcast journalism program. We had already spoken about digital filmmaking, which falls within this school. And then we have design in and of itself. We have studio art, and then we have a more um, graphic design, interactive design, so starting to think within the realm of Silicon Valley building applications for Apple or Microsoft and, and sort of that sort of scope and philosophy. It means of the application process, even though we have five lines in the sand there for deadlines, you can ultimately kind of view us and perceive us as a rolling admissions process. You can apply, it's a free application by way of the Common App or online through an internal um, application directly on our website. Again, it is free. You apply. We're going to get back to you within about two to four weeks, given the time frame, with a really quick turnaround. Um, so theoretically, if you get in that FAFSA, that free application of federal student aid, and you apply before the new year, we're going to get everything back to you in a hand within about two to four weeks there. It means of the application materials that are required. One very important thing to note is that Loyola University New Orleans is a test blind institution. We are not test optional, that is very different. Test blind means that we do not look at or even acknowledge the SAT or the ACT in any capacity. If you inadvertently send your scores to us, we are going to redact that information. It is not taken into consideration in any form for merit-based scholarships or admission just the same. We simply ask for your official high school transcript one letter of recommendation, it can come by way of a counselor, it can come by way of a teacher or a coach or whomever. We know that times are tough. Um, feel free to reach out to me directly if you have any questions about these materials. We know that these are very precarious times. And of course, the personal statement within your application itself. 
For my friends applying to the College of Music and Media, it is a separate conversation in and of itself. It is contingent upon the program that you are ultimately applying to that might require a portfolio. It might require an interview with the faculty, a video audition, a live video audition, or some sort of combination of those four. My lovely and witty and sharp colleague, Gloria, goes by Glow. Her information is right there. She is the recording coordinator for the college. Drop a line to her, touch base, shoot the breeze. She's a hoot and a holler, and she will walk you through every single step in the process here. Here are some quick facts and figures of tuition and cost, all in for my residential students between the meal, blank, meal plan, living on campus, tuition, and those additional fees comes to about 55000 500 and change. It is important to note that while 90% of our students do qualify for some form of financial aid, that 90% figure ultimately boils down to need-based financial aid via the FAFSA. We do not require the CSS profile. We are a FAFSA exclusive university. Again, it is free, which is really nice. So feel free to send that in our direction. What is an important qualifier is that 100% of our admitted students do receive a four-year merit-based academic scholarship. You can add a little uptick to this slide. It actually ranges from 14,000 USD a year all the way up to 23,000. There's additional scholarships there between Ignatian, Social Justice, the Ensemble Award, and Athletics. Vary, of course, they do require separate processes and applications, but the Ignatian Scholarship, for instance, we do offer about 20 full tuition plus scholarship opportunities for students. So just to know that those opportunities are out there. Social justice, I'm actually chair of the social justice scholarship, which is really nice. It's $3,000 renewable for four years. Again, ultimately looking for students that are steeped and anchored within social justice in this new political landscape. I had mentioned this very briefly earlier, but again, to reiterate, we do take up to 30 course credits for successful completion of IB AP and dual enrollment courses or up to a sophomore year status, which is awesome. A few quick um, sort of offices and opportunities. Again, all that in some cases is the boring stuff. This is the reason why students ultimately go to college in the first place. The first and foremost to mention is our Pan American Life Student Success Center. It is a rock star office within our library. It is one floor in and of itself. We had a small uptick in our record setting, 85% retention from freshman to sophomore year. I always like to tell students that the Student Success Center is just a one-stop shop, their little group course. So everything from a personal success and mentoring coach to of course, academic advising, if you're looking to ultimately add that minor or pursue a double major or declare a major, it is very common to do so. We have writing and learning services, as mentioned, the Career Center, the Office of Accessible Education, and then just workshops as well. Very common for our students to pursue the Student Success Center. Study abroad is common. About a third of our students go abroad in some capacity, offered pretty much across the board. Again, some of these programs are contingent upon certain majors, minors, programs. Again, a lot of our journalism students, for instance, they head to Paris because our partner university within Paris is one of the best in the world for journalism. But again, our marine bio students, they almost exclusively um, go to Ecuador and sort of Central Latin and South America just because of our partnerships and opportunities naturally that are there as well. So it really runs the gamut. Again, if you just want to go for just three weeks over the course of the summer or spring break or an entire semester or in some cases an entire academic year, we sit down with you at the start of your freshman year. This is a very strategic process. This is not something you wake up in your junior year and you say, say, Emma, I'm heading to Cuba for a semester. That's not how it works. Um, but again, very much a part of the Jesuit identity and something we take a lot of pride in being in New Orleans. Student life, nice little laundry list here. Over 130 different student organizations. Some of our most common um, is our Black Student Union, our student government association is ranked number 20 right now in the nation. So I think that kind of paints the landscape of our political activism and our student body. We do have Greek life. It is worth mentioning. Um, 
far different than any other Southern <laughs> University. Loyola's Greek life is just a little bit different. We do not necessarily consider ourselves a go Greek or go home sort of school. About a third of our students go Greek in some capacity. Um, but what is probably more important to note that of the 14 different Greek organizations, four or five, I don't remember the exact figure, are historically black college and university Greek organizations. So thinking AKA, again, very, interesting to have that opportunity at a small Catholic Jesuit university and to have such a diverse array of opportunities for our student organizations. And of course, club sports and intramurals, I believe we'll get to that in a little bit. In means of residential life and living on campus, a big takeaway is that you are required to live on campus for your freshman and sophomore year. So your first two years, you are required to live on campus. Starting in your junior year, you are able to move off of campus if you wish to do so. If you want to live um, you know, in a house with other Loyola students or Tulane students, it is certainly very common. About 55, 54% of our students do live on campus over the course of four years. What is nice, particularly about your first year as you enroll and matriculate and get sort of acclimated to the Wolfpack style, um, there are three different residence halls for first year students. They all mirror one another almost identically. You can see it right there within the photo. Um, so you have, in some cases, a very nice exposed brick, um, but same size, again, keeping to the suite or the double living. Um, it's not lottery based. You don't feel like you're uniquely disadvantaged. It is a, a very equal and equitable process. It means of the residential life for your first two years. Campus dining. Can't have a presentation about New Orleans without talking about the food. This is a little different though, because of course it's on campus dining. We do have two different um, dining hall options. What is neat is that Tulane and Loyola share a meal plan. So it definitely adds to sort of the, the eating experience there. So we always have a little bit of a rivalry. We have the Starbucks, they have the Panera, they have the Barnes and Noble, we have the Smoothie King and, and sort of the rest of it. So there's about 20 different external dining options that you can fall within those wolf books within that meal plan. Um, but just knowing as well, geographically where we land, we have little boutiques and eateries um, within walking distance to the university between Ferret Street, Maple, Oak, and Magazine Street, which is a really common one for our students. And we're right on St. Charles. Um, so you're looking maybe a 10 to 15 minute walk at the absolute most for a whole lineup of really cool little eateries where our students like to explore. Talking about Wolfpack Athletics, we are a Division I school of the NAIA, different from the NCAA. Just think a little more regionally based. Think regionally based to the South. Our students are versing students from uh, regional schools of maybe Arkansas, Texas to Florida, and again, in and throughout the, the Gulf Coast, Louisiana specifically. You see some of our offerings there on the Division I scale. If you do you want to pursue this intercollegiate sport? Again, you do get money, you do travel. It's based on the budget just the same. It is still intercollegiate, um, but feel free to defer directly to our website. You actually see it there at the bottom, student life slash athletics. Fill out that questionnaire. It flags and triggers the attention of the coach or assisting coaches. They will reach out to you directly and start that conversation. If D1 is not your thing, and rightfully so, myself just the same, we do offer a host of intramural and club sport options. This is where you really start to see how weird Loyola can be at some points. We have a nationally known Quidditch team, which is awesome, um, but also our rugby is one of the oldest of the South and they do travel pretty extensively um, for our men's rugby team. Keeping healthy, keeping active, you start to see a quick overview of our sports complex, everything from an Olympic sized swimming pool to personal training opportunities. I'm really proud to work for an institution that takes a lot of pride and takes it very seriously to make sure that we are um, active physically, but also mentally just the same. So we really double down on our mental health counseling and resources for our students in this very trying and turbulent and somewhat troubling time. Pretty seamless transition here. Quick little overview. I'm not going to go through all of these specifically, but obviously we've been fielding a ton of questions about COVID-19 and our response rate. I will let you take a moment to sort of peruse these at your leisure. Um, you know, it, it was interesting because New Orleans was one of the first sort of hotspots, for lack of a better term. 
Um, we were really quick to be proactive and rebound. And I'm very thankful, despite living in DC, to work for an institution in a community that is small, that is agile, and most importantly, that is creative. We were able to take this in a very safe fashion. Um, our students were still able to live on campus. They are still doing great. They are thriving. Um, but what was nicest probably about the whole transition and enrollment process this year is that we were more than accommodating. So if you wanted to pursue an online semester or an entire year, you know, we, we walked with students on a very individual process throughout that, throughout that journey and we'll continue to do so. It means of visiting Loyola, regardless of whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or if you are in the midst of the application process, it's a different time. We still have walking tours. If you inadvertently find your way to New Orleans, you are welcome to stop on by, get the lay of the land, BYO mask, that is really important. It's a little different though, obviously. So again, I, I do not implore any student or family to go out of your way to take an in-person walking tour at this time as we enter the winter. We'll circle back at the start of the spring. We will continue this conversation, but in the interim, um, we do have these really cool and nifty little student-led virtual talking tours. So you get the lay of the land, but you actually speak um, in real time with our student tour guides and our ambassadors. You can schedule a call with me offline if you wish to do so for a virtual chat. Um, and we have a, a ton of other little you know, digital archives where you can speak with faculty members and, and sort of the rest of it. I don't like to defer to YouTube necessarily, but we have a, it's about a 10 minute uh, virtual tour. It's awesome, you gotta check it out. It does a deep dive. You see a lot of the residence halls and our facilities and it is super creative and, and definitely a little there. My personal information, my name, my number, feel free to follow up with me through email. We can schedule a call. Um, to speak a little more in depth about a certain program or an opportunity. I always like to sort of um, close this out and I, I sincerely hope that you were able to allude or, or sort of qualify this information throughout the course of this presentation. Um, but one of my biggest points of pride for Loyola students, and I think perhaps the biggest takeaway, if there's anything you wanna take away from this, it's this. Every single student at Loyola University New Orleans is creative. They all dovetail on a very creative outlook, a very musical presence, a very artistic vision. It is a very artsy, fartsy community. It doesn't matter whether you're a computer science student, whether you're criminology and justice, marine biology, law, or whether you are jazz studies or urban electronic music or music industry studies. Every single student is creative and you see that and you feel that from the second you step foot onto campus, you'll see students who are strumming guitars next to palm trees, and you just feel that energy. And again, that is a, a testament to the city of New Orleans. It is a testament to being a small, vibrant Jesuit institution. Um, but here's hoping that you were able to sort of walk away from this presentation with just a better understanding of the Wolfpack and, and what we have to offer. So I will stop the screen share there. Don't think we have any questions or comments or concerns, but again, you have my information. Feel free to drop a line. Don't be a stranger, touch base with me. Again, I'm not far off the beaten path. I'm right over in DC. And I look forward to working with you all. Thanks so much. Great, thank you, Doug, so much for, uh, for presenting for us and, uh, and for taking the time out uh, to, uh, to introduce us to Loyola University in New Orleans. Thank you, appreciate it. Of course, have a good day.